We're joined once again with QU Media CEO Kurt Marvis to discuss the growing trend of capital flowing into India like we've seen it do in China over the last several decades. But more importantly, why this is very advantageous for his company. We'll then dive into the different media channels that QU has recently launched, as well as several key developments that investors won't want to miss. Kurt, welcome back. Thanks, Brandon. Good to see you again. And nice to see you as well. And like I said earlier, uh, we are going to get into some really important news releases that you put out over the last several weeks. But I wanted to start with talking about this exciting topic of all of this capital and money now flowing into India, like we've all seen flowing into China over the last several decades. But we've seen that tap start to almost turn off. And where it's turning on sounds like it is India. Do you mind diving into this uh, This this theory, this, this, this topic a little bit more, but more importantly, how will this impact everything you're doing with QU Media in India? Yeah, I think, you know, we get asked a lot about um, why India? And that's a very common question that I'll hear. India is, I, I say this all the time, I believe India is going to be a country that will experience the same kind of impact and economic growth in the next 20 years that we saw in China over the last 20 years. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. There's the reason because there's a rule of law there. There's a massive population of young people. There's higher education. There's huge amount of capital flowing into India from the largest investors in the world, both from traditional investment like the Tiger Globals of the world or Saudi so sovereign wealth funds, um, along with the biggest uh, uh, corporate investors, the Googles, the Microsofts, the Amazons, etc. So. India is in an incredibly dynamic position right now uh, for, for huge economic growth. And literally every day, uh, you're seeing new companies through both private equity, through venture investment, through public vehicles that are, that are growing. I mean, the Bombay Stock Exchange, uh, you can read about how it's you know, looking to be one of the largest growth exchanges over the next decade in terms of the value of the businesses that are traded there. So... We didn't go to India just because of what the value of the investment was there. We really went to India because for the business that we're in of, of dealing with social video and, and creator economy and short form content and social media in general, uh, India is probably other than with the exception of possibly China, the largest uh, territory on the world for that. So we went there really for business purposes, but I think from an economic point of view, uh, the arrows in India are only pointing one direction, and that's straight up. Yeah, and it'll be very interesting uh, to really watch that over the course of this year, uh, and especially over the next several years. But how those indicators are pointing straight up. The other theme I want to talk about, unfortunately, is the opposite of that. When you start looking at the markets in North America, we, we had uh, a lot of the big boards, a lot of these large caps had a very, very good 2021. And, and so much money poured into those. But we've obviously, to, to begin 2022, we've seen the exact reversal of that. And it's pulling some of these small caps down as well. But we were discussing just before this interview, we were discussing this theme of where that money might be going once we find some sort of a bottom in the, the larger boards. Can you discuss that a little bit more and more specifically how uh, we believe your company is set up very, very well to potentially take advantage of this theme? Yeah, I mean, look, I think volatility is uh, something that is always hanging out there when it comes to the capital markets. Um, and people have been talking about a correction in the market for, I don't know, what, two or three years now. Everybody's been saying next month, next quarter, next whatever. Maybe this is it. Maybe this isn't it. We've also seen some bumps that have happened along the way where everybody, you know, chicken little, the sky is falling and then it didn't fall. Um, and everyone went, oh, God, I guess I shouldn't have sold then. Um, so I think what's happening is there's no doubt that we've seen a massive amount of money flow out of the small and micro cap market over the last six to nine months. And I think that's partially been driven by, you know, everybody talks about the flight to quality of the of the big the big boys, the Microsofts, the Googles, the Amazons, et cetera. We're big believers that uh, that money's got to go somewhere. 
the money just didn't disappear and people lost all their investment capital and are never going to invest anymore. Some of that has gone in and out of the crypto market. And I'm sure we'll see that happen, but that's also going to be a market that I believe will continue to be volatile. And I think one of the areas that you'll see a lot of investors looking at is back to the small cap space where there's quality. That's where we think we fit. I mean, the Q is not a company. We've been around for a while. We had a really rough time in the early going, you know, riding the, 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 the uh, stock market price down the wrong direction. We rebounded very, very sharply uh, from that. And now we've kind of settled back in and we're suffering like many are. But the fact of the matter is, is I know that none of what is happening in the stock price today is driven by business metrics. That's what's frustrating about it. The business metrics of the company have never been better. The opportunity for the company has never been better. I made the statement when we were trading at 40 cents that it was a better investment then than it was when we were trading at three cents. And the reason for that was simple is the company was in a position at 40 cents where we had a real business with real growth potential that was being realized as opposed to a truly speculative bet. And so... We look at it and say the markets will figure their, themselves out. Our, our job is to continue to build the core value that's being driven in the business. And we're doing that. We're here for the long run. As I said a minute ago, India's about the long run. And so as people start to look to places where they can obviously make money through their investments, but where they can go places other than the you know five or 10 companies that are making up the majority of the Dow, um, I think, you know, QU Media is going to be one of those because we've got a quality business that's growing in a quality and sustainable way. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, you, speaking with brokers and different investors, like I'm always trying to do to try to get that uh, that edge and just always know what's going on in the markets. Uh, a lot of them are now saying, hey, look, you know, if, if I got this portfolio and unfortunately some of my larger caps that were less risky last year are now my riskier assets and those are starting to go down. I need to find something where I can gain back those percentages, but I'm not just going to go into any different shell. I'm not just going to go into any different company. I want to find the ones that last year were putting down those foundations. They were uh, you know, increasing the value of the company, but their share price just wasn't reacting. Those are the ones I think that will stand out. And those are the ones I think, uh, as soon as we find this bottom in the market and a little bit of that fear is gone, I, I do think, like you just said, more of that money will flow in. But You know, since we last spoke and and you're just talking about the metrics and everything that's growing in India, since we last spoke, you've now launched uh, two new channels in India. Can you describe the significance of these milestones while also giving investors an idea of how much this can potentially increase the reach and exposure for your company? Yeah, the 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 model for the (laughs) India business has always been to build a large scale digital media uh, entity and media company. It's never been to build a single channel and have one channel that was sort of our version of, you know, ESPN or whatever, MTV, that was going to be the, the, the thing that was going to drive that. You always want to have those as a flagship. You always want to uh, have sort of your, your, one of your key, uh, the tip of the arrow, if you will, that's driving that. But the, the goal for us in India is to get much, much bigger than that. And there are many things that I can't talk about today that we're doing that will the you know investors and shareholders will be hearing about across the year of 2022 and beyond and that we're that we're doing in in our business to do that but one of those main things is to grow more and more channels and the the channel business um, I use that word in the most uh, in the broadest sense it could be a digitally oriented channel it could be a channel that's only running on app based platforms it could be only on connected TVs. It could be on cable and satellite, or it could be on, you know, D, all of the above. And so we started the the channel that really drove our business in 2021 and at the present time has been a Hindi language, what's called a GEC, general entertainment channel. It's been so successful in terms of the format that we made a decision that we wanted to launch more channels like that into specific language groups in India. So we're launching uh, uh, here very shortly what's called the Q Marathi. It's just like the Q Hindi channel, same thing, except it's in the Marathi language. The Marathi language is the third largest uh, language group in India in terms of native speakers. It's about 84 million people. And to put it in perspective, the largest country in Europe is Germany with about 84 million people. 
And everybody knows that Germany is a very large uh, territory and a large uh, opportunity for, for businesses. So that's how we look at the Marathi channel. We expect that to do great things. We're following a formula that we know works. And uh, so we're super excited about that. The other channel we're launching, um, slightly different direction. That's called the Q Kahanya. Kahanya really means storytelling in Hindi, but that channel is all, it's also associated with animation. And we found a niche in India that's been very untapped and unexplored for what we call alternative animation. What does that mean? We used to call it adult animation, but that kind of gave the wrong weird concept. So we now refer to it as alternative animation. What is that? Well, what it really means is it's not kids animation. It's not for preschoolers or eight-year-old kids or Disney style kid animation. This is animation that's for an older audience, for really 15 to 35 year olds, that's more sophisticated, that's edgier, that's different, that has stories that might involve horror or other you know, things that you might get. More even almost like if you think of a graphic novel as compared to, a, to sort of a, a cartoon comic book. And so that's called the Q Kahanya. We've had huge success with that content in our traditional channels business. Uh, we're launching actually tomorrow uh, onto four connected TV platforms in India. I call them connected TVs. Most people would, would know them as smart TVs. These are TVs that when you hook it up, you kick, click, you know, connect the internet straight into it and watch your channels that way. So these channels, there's gonna be more of these. You'll hear about more of these in 2022. This isn't the end of channel launches in 2022. These are all about building a diversified media entity that doesn't have one thing that it's relying on. And it's no different than, than what media companies around the world have done for the last hundred years in terms of building a portfolio of assets that are providing the revenue generation and the growth of the brand, not just one thing. Yeah, and I appreciate that really detailed answer. I, I'm sure that many uh, existing investors will really appreciate it, but also new investors as they come across this story as well. And, you know, something that you had uh, announced, uh, I, it was very shortly before these channels were launched or just after, uh, was that audition that you had. And you had in three weeks, just to give you an example of how much reach and exposure uh, the queue is getting, uh, in three weeks, you had 1 billion impressions uh, and over 40,000 auditions for something that you were you were auditioning for. Now, imagine when you start adding that second channel, that third channel, that's where, you know, you, the reach that you're going to be able to start getting and already do, of course, but even furthermore from these new channels in India, what you can do for that now in advertising dollars and getting new sponsors, I, I can imagine it is, you know, the sky's the limit almost. Yeah, we currently in, in India, we currently reach across both television, traditional TV platforms and digital and app based platforms about seven, about 800 million people call it a, a week. In other words, the potential audience that we could reach that, that have access to our programming is about 800 million. We currently reach and are viewed by about 100 million uh, people every week in India. That's a lot. OK, 100 million mm -hmm. people of those 800 million people are watching our programming every week. Our goal this year is to have that double by the end of the year and get to 200 million people, which we think we'll achieve. Part of that is by launching new channels, launching new uh, uh, content into these various platforms that we're on to gain more viewership. So, you know, right now, if you figure we're, we're 100 out of 800, that's great. That's an incredibly great stat, actually, to get that kind of viewership. We get to 200 out of 800, you know, and get 25% of the people that are on the platforms watching us on a weekly basis. That's massive. And that's the kind of growth that we're expecting this year. Yeah. And, and speaking of growth and speaking of platforms, we're going to switch platforms because there's another news release that recently uh, got announced as well about a partnership with Mazalo, a cutting edge blockchain based and gamified video platform. For someone who may not understand what exactly that means, can you dive into what it actually means, but also why you chose this path for QU Media? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Um, Mazalo is, um, uh, even though you wouldn't necessarily know this, it's a rewards based that sits on top of crypto is what I was going to say. You wouldn't know, know that necessarily. It's really more importantly than that. It's a rewards based platform. What I mean by that is you get rewarded for viewing the channel. There are no commercials on Mazalo. There's no advertisements on Mazalo, but there's also no subscription fee for Mazalo. It's a free ad free platform. Well, the natural reaction to that would be, 
okay, so how do they make money? Well, the way they make money is the viewers get rewarded for time spent viewing the channel. So if you watch an hour worth of Q content on Mazzalo, when you sign up for Mazzalo, you get your Mazzalo wallet. Your Mazzalo wallet gets rewarded with Mazzalo coins for the amount of time that you spend watching the channel. Now, some people might say, okay, well, I'm just going to turn the channel on and leave it on 24 hours a day. And while I'm walking around the house or sleeping or whatever, maybe people will do that. Let them do that. It doesn't matter. What happens is, is your Mazzalo coins then become like coupons effectively for discounts of products and services for all the advertisers that are in the Mazzalo store that you can use it for. So now you go to Starbucks the next day and you get 10 rupees off your cup of coffee that you get at Starbucks because you're using your coupon basically of Mazzalo coins. You go to the shoe store to buy some new tennis shoes and you, you, you get, you know, a uh, thousand rupees off your Adidas sneakers that you're buying because you're using Mazzalo coins for a discount. It's all tied to the advertisers. The advertisers are paying for this in a couponing basis to do that. But for the user, they're rewarded for that. So it's sort of like a earn while you watch model. Beyond that, this all actually sits upon a crypto blockchain uh, um, system that's run by a company called Exponite. So the system that runs underneath Mazzalo is run by a, by a firm Exfinite. We're experimenting right now. We believe that the crypto and blockchain world will grow significantly in India. As I said earlier, we're a long-term play in India. So we're dipping our toe in the water. We're not going to spend you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars right now driving our business into the crypto and blockchain space in India that's still largely unregulated and unknown in terms of what happens with the government. But Mazal is a way for us to enter that world, to get data, to learn, to partner with somebody who's there. And of course, you can imagine that somewhere down the road, we've had discussions internally about, wow, what if we had a Q coin and viewers on all of our channels? We've got three. We're going to have more. We've got video on demand content. We're going to have app based content. What if those uh, viewers got rewarded with Q coins? What would that look like in the future? So that's that's a speculative hint that I'll give to everyone. Yeah, and once again, I appreciate that because I was reading that news release and I was very curious, you know, why go down on that angle? What does that angle even mean? So getting even more information there. So appreciate that. Uh, speaking about getting more information and lastly, uh, like I always like to do for investors who may be just finding out about your story or maybe continue to pay attention to your story, what catalyst and milestones should they be excited about coming down the pipeline over the next coming weeks and months? Well, I think, look, there's always the there's always the catalyst and miles, milestone of revenue. <clears throat> you know, we, we there was a period of time I got a lot asked a lot of questions about break even. And obviously the goal of our business is to create an EBITDA positive business. We're absolutely, you know, looking at, at ways to do that. But at the same time, um, we've kind of hit our stride as a very, very high growth business in the India marketplace right now. To become one of the fastest growing media channels in India is not easy. And we want to take full advantage of that while we're on that, you know, as, as that's move as we're moving up the chart, so to speak. And so we are investing capital into the business. That's why we're launching more channels right now. That's why we plan on launching more channels in the future. So one of the areas to look at is obviously revenue and revenue growth that we get as a result of that. The other one is to look at the viewership numbers and the footprint of people that are watching the channel on a weekly basis. As I said, we've got a goal to move from 100 million to 200 million viewers a week. And that means across all of the different places that our content is appearing that are interacting with that. Why is that important? Because viewership drives revenue. And so if the revenue is growing, then you can pretty much guess that the viewership is growing. So these are the kind of things that I think people should watch for. And the final metric I would say is just keep an eye on the India uh, environment and the India marketplace in general. You cannot discount uh, the power of what's happening in the capital markets and in the financial markets in India as a whole. And it took us a while to build up to the position we're in there right now. But we all know that in invest an investment world and the world in general is, are you in the right place at the right time? And we think we're in the right place at the right time. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, love hearing it, Kurt. Always appreciate, uh, you know, your time to, to really 
dive into these different news releases, news releases that are coming out because some, some times people just like read it and they don't understand what's going on. But when they can see yourself, they can hear your words, they can hear you dive into why you're making decisions. I think that makes uh, a huge impact on those investors. So I appreciate it very much. I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future as well. Okay, great, Brandon. Good to see you again.